Every year, on the third Saturday in February, the global pangolin community comes together to celebrate this beautiful and unique animal. This year, we will be celebrating that on the 19th of February. Joining us in studio to tell us more about World Pangolin Day, we have Kelsey Predica, the director and founder of Pangolin Conservation and Research Foundation. Welcome, Kelsey. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. First of all, um, you are not only the founder and director of the Pangolin Conservation and Research Foundation, you do so much more. Can you please tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I'm also the secretariat of the Namibian Pangolin Working Group. Mm -hmm. And that group is chaired by the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism. And with that group, we work a lot on guidelines and we've drafted the National Conservation Management Plan for pangolins. And I'm also an IUCN SSC Pangolin Specialist Group member. That is incredible. How long have you been in the pangolin community, if we can call it that? Uh, well, I started my master's on pangolin in 2018, so mm -hmm. just over four years. Oh, wow. Okay. And... See, okay, you can obviously agree when I say that this is a very beautiful and unique creature. So why is this thing so unique? Why is this so sought after? Well, they're, they're very unique because they're the only scaled mammal mm -hmm. that exists. And they've been around for nearly 80 million years. Oh my goodness. Okay, so since they've been around for that long, we, we do need to respect them and honor them. Do they bite? No. Okay, that's good to <laughs> they know. They have a long, sticky tongue. They actually don't have any jaw. It's just not cartilage. at all. No. Okay, that's interesting. I learn something new every day. I also want to find out um, what threats do pangolins face in our day and age? Yeah. So the the biggest threat to pangolin these days are actually people. Mm -hmm. um, the number one threat is that they are poached for um, their scales as yeah. well as meat and body parts. There are eight species worldwide, um, so there's four in China, four in Asia. And so a lot of the big threats have started to come from the traditional Chinese medicine and meat market in Asia. And now pressure is coming to Africa to fulfill their needs. And how severe is that problem now here since it's reached our shores here in Africa? It's quite bad. Um, they regularly are confiscating seizures of up to sometimes even more than 10 tons of scales. One pangolin, one pangolin weighs, the pangolin species here weighs about 10 kilos. Yeah. And oh, about okay. two so kilos of scales. So that's too much. Yeah. Okay. Um, I read somewhere that they also use their blood. Yes. They pretty much have a different belief for every part of the pangolin. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It really, they really do need our help then. So um, what is being done in Namibia to help conserve our pangolins? Well, um, we thankfully have a lot of things in place more than some of the other Southern African countries. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, the Namibian Pangolin Working Group, we've done a lot of capacity building and training for first responders in handling pangolins mm -hmm. and giving them the best care possible when it comes to veterinary care. And then we also do post-release monitoring to make sure that they settle into their habitat nicely. And um, we also work on developing guidelines and protocols for pangolins, including, as I mentioned, um, first response, release, as well as um, media, filming, tourism, things like that. Uh, what, where does the population currently stand of pangolins in Namibia? We're quite unsure about the population because such little research has been done. Yes, that's um, very true, yeah. And, we, it, and they've been around for so long. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. It's because yeah. they're mostly nocturnal occur in areas with a lot of dangerous animals mm -hmm. and they're extremely difficult to monitor. I would, I would assume so, but they are still interesting to look at. Very beautiful, but yeah. also unique. Let's be honest. Um, I also want to look at the Namibian Pangolin Working Group. What is it exactly? So the group is a collective group of volunteers and um, we all come from different backgrounds as stakeholders in pangolin conservation. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, MEFT is chairing the group. We also have members from their directorate of um, scientific services. We also have protective resources division, intelligence, Namibian police. Um, we've got NAREC, which is a rehabilitation center. 
uh, NUST Biodiversity Research Center, and then we have the Namibian Chamber of Environment and RECAT Trust that provide financial support for our efforts. I love the fact that there's so many sectors involved in the conservation of pangolins in Namibia. What else can we do as Namibians? Is there something specific, perhaps donations, you know, um, what can we do? Yeah, there's there's actually quite a lot. There's still a lot of people that I meet that still don't know what a pangolin looks like or is. So definitely educate ourselves. Education, That's number one. <laughs> education and awareness is very important. Definitely to also educate the illegality of trafficking, poaching, removing pangolin from the wild. Mm -hmm. It's something that's very important. And if anyone sees anything suspicious, there is a hotline that uh, can be texted. It's double five, triple five. And all those matters will be looked into seriously. Um, the Namibian Pangolin Working Group also has a donation portal on the Namibian Chamber of Environments webpage. Mm -hmm. And it also talks all about all of the work we've done. And um, in addition to that, we're having a fun run in honor of World Pangolin Day. Okay. And so you can attend and there will be all kinds of fun pangolin events to do at this day. Uh, all the information will be available on the socials and your website, correct? Yes. All right, fantastic. Yes. I just quickly want to talk about World Pangolin Day. What makes this day so unique and special? What is special about this day? It's a special day because pangolins for a long time have been very low profile, despite mm -hmm. being the most trafficked mammal since 2014. Yes. So this is a great time to bring awareness and attention for the species, get people interested and involved, you know, kind of pick up the hype around the species and really make people aware of the threats that they face and what can be done to protect them. You said that the pangolin has no jaw whatsoever and... The fact that it's the only mammal with scales, that's pretty interesting. I th I'm sure that this bad boy has so much more secrets to share. What else can you tell us about it? How fast does it run? <laughs> they can't really run. Not at all? <laughs> no, they're actually bipedal, so they walk on two legs. <laughs> okay, that's so cute. And, Sorry. <laughs> um, but they can be faster than me because they go under mm -hmm. the thick thorns and bush and over the mountains. So they, oh, wow. But um, they don't really run. Their main defense is actually curling into a ball, which is why they're so threatened. Hence the scales. Mm. Yes. Yes. So they're, they're really unique. Um, they actually are um, more closely related to carnivores, despite being anteaters. And this That's is an example of convergent evolution. Um, did it ever go by any other name in the past, or has it always been the pangolin? Um, as far as I know, it's always gone by pangolin, mm -hmm. and it actually comes from a Malay word, which means pangaling, and that word in Malay stands for one who rolls. Oh, that's pretty cool. Kind of like the boulder. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to their eyesight or hearing, is it is it very strong or quite weak? What can you tell us about that? Uh, they have quite poor vision. Mm -hmm. um, individuals vary, um, but their strongest sense is their smell. And they use their sense of smell to find ant and termite nests underground. Mm -hmm. And some of the research we've done shows they're actually extremely picky. They really? choose about five to six species out of over 30 available. Oh, wow. Okay. So they're the prissy kind as well then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could also be, we hypothesize that... Um, because their stomach is like a gizzard, mm -hmm. which is a mechanical stomach, they need to ingest um, chemicals. So they actually prefer ants and termites with a chemical defense. That makes sense. So they're quite smart and spot on when it comes to that and their food hunting. Um, anything you can tell us about the claws, nails? I know I sound well, like such a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have really long claws and nails to rip open the nests. Of course. Um, so they use their two front legs to tear open nests and target the eggs and larvae, mm -hmm. um, which they find with their great sense of smell. Earlier you mentioned that there are eight species, four in Asia and four in Africa. What, which are the species you, that you will find here in Namibia? In Namibia, we have just one species. Mm -hmm. It's the Tamix pangolin. It's actually the only species adapted to an arid habitat, and it ranges all the way up into southern Sudan and Chad. That's quite interesting. Uh, can you tell us anything else about the other seven species? Well, And yeah. how much do they vary? They vary quite a bit. Um, the species we have here is the second largest. 
Um, and all three other African species are occurring along the equator where there's a significant um, amount of rainfall. And so the giant pangolin can weigh up to 35 kilos. Wow. <laughs> like a small dog, a yeah. medium dog. And um, the other two species occur more in the canopy of the rainforest, so mm -hmm. they're much smaller. So there's the black-bellied pangolin and the white-bellied pangolin. And they're closer to, the black-bellied is about three to five kilos, and then okay. the right. white-bellied is just a little bit larger than that. I want to just look at, uh, if I can put it like this, air quotes, the family dynamics of <laughs> pangolins. How many pups do they have a, per year? Pangolins have one pup per year. Only one? Just one. Sometimes twins have been observed, but it's extremely rare. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, how, long, how long does the pregnancy period last? It's roughly five months, about okay. 145 to 150 days or so. I would actually like to find out what is the process when it comes to pangolins after they're born, how long do they stay with their mother and so forth and so on. Yeah, so they, the first, about the first two months, mm -hmm. they stay in what's called a natal den where they're protected and safe. And the only time you get to see them is when the mom is moving them to a new burrow. Um, which so it will be, be extremely rare to spot one. It is, yes, at that young, young age. Yes. And they actually ride on the mother's back when she moves them, and if she encounters any threats, she'll actually curl around the baby to protect it. Oh, that's beautiful. And um, she usually will only move them if she thinks that there's a threat at the current burrow, or she can also move to a new area where there might be better foraging. We actually have a really nice story of a mom and pup that were rescued from the trade in October. Mm -hmm. And um, they weren't doing so well and had to get veterinary care and we've released them back and now they're doing really well. Oh, that's and great the, to hear. The baby is now almost five months. Mm -hmm. So still with mom, but foraging nearby. And how, how fast do they grow? Very fast. Extremely. Yeah, okay. they're born at about 400 to 500 grams. And mm -hmm. by about four to five months, they're about five kilos. Okay. <laughs> what are they yeah. eating? Just, <laughs> <ants and termites. laughs> Just a lot. Just a lot, yeah. yeah. A pangolin can eat up to about 20,000 ants and termites in one night. One night? Mm. Okay, I think that gives binge eating a whole new definition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have another question for you. What will we be doing here in Namibia to celebrate World Pangolin Day? For World Pangolin Day, PCRF will be hosting a family fun day. Mm -hmm. There will be a fun run with a costume contest for the best dressed pangolin. Oh, I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should be fun, right? <laughs> yes. We've got a 1.5K for the kids and a 5K for those that want to run a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And after that, we will have a family market with some live entertainment and vendors and fun pangolin crafts and different things that... Uh, bring out the pangolin theme to raise awareness for the species. Fantastic. Thank you. I look forward to it. I especially yeah. look forward to that uh, costume competition. Yeah, we hope to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be fun and very creative, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we hope, we hope to get a lot of entries in that one. All right, fantastic. I started with carnivores, big cats specifically, and I came to do my master's thesis in Namibia, but I wanted to do something that would contribute to conservation and I got sucked into tourism. Nothing against tourism, but it's not what I came for. Um, so then I was looking for opportunities to move to a different place. And uh, I came across the fact that nobody's doing anything for pangolins. And so I thought, if I only did a two-year degree, it would still even help the species a lot. And so I decided, OK, I'll do my master's on pangolin ecology. And you've been in love ever since. Yeah, I just, they're so sweet and innocent and it's like nobody's doing anything. So, you know, somebody has to help them out and they're so fascinating to watch. Oh, you know, I've never, I've never actually, I don't think I've ever seen one. So I'm sure I would want to, the way you describe it makes me want to experience it myself. Yeah, they're, they're really interesting. Their long sticky tongue can go out like about that far. Wow. And okay. it curls as it goes. You said it's sticky as well. Yeah, they have a gland in their throat that produces this like saliva. And when, okay, so when it curls, is it, uh, obviously the tongue is quite structured and strong to grab the ants and termites yeah, as it, it pleases. When, when it goes through the tunnels, it, you know, it just 
the eggs and ants and larvae stick to the tongue and it actually goes all the way back into the stomach cavity. It has like a sheath. It's as long as their body, actually. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. No wonder they don't have a jaw. Wow. Um, you gave us the weight. Do you perhaps have, uh, how many scales would you find on a pangolin, on an, uh, you know, on a normal adult size pangolin? An adult pangolin would have around 380 to 400 scales. That's beautiful. I can now see why World Pangolin Day is so important and why we need to do our research and become more aware of this creature and, you know, how it contributes to our environment. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. <laughs> and um, you have really broadened my horizon and I am enlightened and oh, I think I'm in love. These creatures are beautiful, unique and interesting. And I can see why you, you were hooked. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I could broaden your horizons and Thank make you. you fall in love with pangolins. We hope that the rest of the world will do the same. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Odil Gertze and this episode was brought to you by Gondwana Collection Namibia.